recently I got an email from Nancy who watches my YouTube channel and she asked a very good question. She was curious about my background, what degrees or certifications I have in food science, and I thought, well, I've been blabbing on here all about food science, I haven't yet really talked about my background. So I was trying to figure out exactly where I should pick my story up and I think we should start when I'm already at college because before that point I actually had no idea what food science was or that it existed. So it's not like I was a kid who always dreamed of growing up to be a food scientist. Uh, that's not the story at all. So I first found food science when I was at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So I was born and raised in Wisconsin and ended up going to college for my bachelor's degree. I chose to go to UW-Madison. And during my first year at UW-Madison, uh, sort of by a happy accident, I found out that food science was a major and pretty quickly within one semester had transferred into the Department of Food Science. So this is sort of where everything started before this. I didn't know food science existed and it's had a huge impact on where I am right now. But in 2014, I graduated with my bachelor's of science in food science. And I look back on those four years that it took for me to get my bachelor's degree and I made some of my best friends in food science, like the friends that I go to their weddings and their baby showers. And those four years were super fun years of my life. I was gonna say best, but I don't like to say anything is the best year of my life. The next step in my life was graduate school. So I actually knew I was going to be going to graduate school my whole senior year of undergrad or your fourth year of undergrad because uh, right when I got back from summer vacation to start my senior year, I actually met with uh, one of the food science professors and advisor to talk how my internship went, talk about my classes I'll be taking, and just sometimes you're just in the right place at the right time. And he had just gotten a call from the USDA that he had a grant funded. So he had money to start a new project and I walked in the door and we basically talked about if I wanted to go to grad school and he had this project if I wanted to take it. So um, I thought about it for about a week and to be honest, I'm, I did not really know what I was getting into. Graduate school is very different than undergrad and I think I was maybe, how old would I have been? I was maybe like 22 or 23 at this point. So I did not really know what I was supposed to do. I just decided, well, I've always been really good at school, so I suppose I'll just keep going to school. And during the fourth year or my senior year of undergrad, I actually started working on the research that I would continue on into grad school. And uh, just a bit of advice, if you can get work in a professor's lab, do something in lab, I highly recommend it. It's really great opportunity and they'll probably write you a really awesome letter of recommendation. But for me, what was nice about starting lab work is then my transition to grad school was very easy because I already was familiar with the lab, I knew the professor, and I already lived in Madison. Officially, I would have started grad school summer, summer of 2014 is when I would have started the master's towards my master's degree. And my research topic was looking into what exactly fat globules are doing in foods like ice cream and whipped topping. And this is because to make those certain foods, to have the sort of texture and the sensory attributes we like, you need to have the fat globules undergo something called partial coalescence, which basically builds uh, this huge fat network throughout these products. Um, and so I was investigating uh, how can we manipulate these fat networks? How does it change uh, properties of ice cream or whipped topping? And this is why I have several videos on my channel talking about uh, ice cream, talking about partial coalescence and those types of products because uh, that's what I like to talk about. I studied that for a lot, a lot of years. 
So uh, at UW-Madison, in the food science department at least, they have a master's bypass program, which means you do your research for a master's degree and you defend it to your committee, but you just keep continuing on to your PhD. So you don't like stop and fully write your master's thesis. You sort of skip that to save time if you intend to go through to your PhD. So I don't technically have a master's degree. I did that bypass program. So it took probably about two years to officially bypass my master's degree. And then I was a PhD student for about four more years. Um, like I said, this was still the same project. This was the same research, the same professor. I was still at UW-Madison. During this time, I would say the most notable thing is that I got to spend six months in Australia working with a collaborator. And so I went to the University of New South Wales, which meant I lived in Sydney. And it was an amazing experience. I really loved being abroad. And this uh, really inspired me that once I finished my PhD, because I would have to return to Wisconsin to do that, I really wanted to make sure that I went abroad again. Now, as I'm nearing the end of my PhD, March 2020 comes around, which most of you probably know, this is when COVID really hits the US. And I remember the day before lockdown because I was reading the news at my desk at a uh, university. And when I packed my things up, I packed up like any of the data I would need, all my lab notebooks, anything I would need to finish writing my dissertation because I thought there was a good chance we were not going to be allowed back into lab. And sure enough, that night uh, it was announced we weren't going no students were allowed to go back uh, on university. So I was lucky in that I was already writing my dissertation. So all I really needed was my laptop. Uh, if I was doing lab work or finishing up lab work, I would have gotten very, very behind. Uh, but that being said, it really sucks to write your dissertation in the first place. It's really hard. And so to write it in your small apartment alone, month after month really, really makes it worse. I would, I would say it was, it was not a great experience. But finally, after several months of writing, I really don't remember how long this specifically took. Uh, my advisor, he approves my dissertation, which means I get to schedule my defense. And I actually remember the day it was scheduled for a Friday. It was June 26, 2020. It was online. In general, it was very anticlimactic because for many years I was gonna plan this like big party and I was gonna walk across the stage and have a ceremony and all my friends were gonna fly in and congratulate me and call me doctor. And of course, none of that happened because it was like the height of COVID. So I don't have any like fun pictures to show you of me in a cap and gown. So in summer of 2020, I am looking to enter the workforce for the first time. For the first time in my life, I am not in school. And it is a very weird time in the world right now, summer of 2020. Uh, most of my friends were losing their jobs or being laid off. Not my food science friends, actually food scientists were very secure in their jobs right now because uh, people always need to eat, but my friends that had uh, other majors uh, were losing their jobs right when I was like, oh, I'm applying, I need to find a job. So um, it was a very odd time. And obviously I people weren't moving in between countries. I don't think I would have been able to go abroad because countries were shut down. And even a lot of jobs weren't being posted at the time. Uh, so it was a bit of a weird situation. Now the good news was that as my defense date was getting closer, I was actually approached by the food science department chair and he asked me if I would be interested in a one year teaching contract within the food science department. And this uh, deal was quite enticing to me at the time because as a grad student, I had helped teach a lot of these classes already. I knew the professors very well in the department and it would be one year I would have a paycheck. I already lived in Madison. It was very comfortable. 
So this, accepting this position was a very easy decision for me. And so I signed my first contract for a job as a lecturer at UW-Madison. It also allowed me to finish writing some of my research from my PhD. Uh, and I, I just felt very lucky because I had a job uh, when many other people were not so lucky. And during that one year, I taught a lot of different classes and I love teaching. I love working with students and find it super rewarding. So I really was involved in teaching things like food chemistry, food manufacturing, senior project, which is kind of like a senior thesis, like a research based project. I helped in uh, what else? Uh, food functionality, which is maybe my favorite class. So. I kind of ha had a hand in a lot of these different classes. I taught mostly juniors and seniors, so the upperclassmen. And for being a year of a pandemic, uh, it honestly was a very good year. I really loved that job, but I knew it's just one year, right? It's temporary. And that's what I wanted because I still did not want to give up on my dream of going abroad. So uh, as that uh, contract came to an end, I started applying for uh, postdoctoral researcher positions. So a postdoc is someone who has their PhD but still performs research at a university. That's usually called a postdoc. And the first position that I found and I was really, really interested in was for a postdoc in the Netherlands. So it's at Wageningen University. But if you're a native English speaker, you would probably pronounce it like Wageningen. But long story short, I apply, go through a couple interviews and I get offered this job, which was amazing. And so the summer of 2021, I moved from the United States to the Netherlands. And this actually brings us to present day. This is my current job. So I'm a postdoc in the food quality and design group at Bahninga. I do uh, a lot of different things, which makes it super fun. I teach in three different dairy classes. I advise or supervise bachelor's students, master's students, PhD students in their research and thesis projects. So it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, which I, I find super rewarding and very fun. And I guess that about wraps it up. So that is uh, my background. But if you have any more specific questions about bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, definitely leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you.